Okay, in today's video, we're going to replace ideal transmission lines in a matching network with models of real transmission lines. So here I have a matching network that's matching an impedance of 62.2 plus J 11.3 ohms to 50 ohms using a single stub matching network. So we have a series stub and a shunt stub, and we're using an open circuited shunt stub. Now I've pre-calculated that the electric length of the series stub should be about 30.96 degrees at 5 gigahertz, and the electric length of the open stub should be about 162.72 degrees at 5 gigahertz. Now, when I run the simulation, and if we plot the magnitude of S11, in other words, the return loss in this case, we'll see that the return loss around 5 gigahertz is pretty good, below minus 10 dB from about 4.6 to about 6.2 gigahertz and almost centered at 5 gigahertz. So this is a pretty good matching network. Now we're going to try and replace these stubs with microstrip stubs. So the first thing that we need to do is do a line calculation using line calc. We'll go to tools, line calc, start line calc. Line calc is now open and I'm going to put in some common parameters for an FR4 single layer board. And we're going to synthesize one of the transmission lines that we'll need. We needed a 50 ohm line that is 30.96 degrees. And you can see that that means that we need a transmission line with a width of 36 mils and a length of 56 mils. All right, I'm going to put that transmission line in by going to T-Lines Microstrip. We're going to add an M sub component. And I'm going to make the parameters here match the parameters that I used in line calc. Okay, now we can add microstrip line components. So here I'm going to add an M line and I'm going to use the same dimensions that we found in like in line count 36.31 mils for the width and 56.79 mils for the length. I'm going to go ahead and copy the ports. All right, now finally, I need a, another transmission line with a slightly different electric length, 162.72 degrees. I'm going to synthesize that line. I'm going to add another M line component. I'm going to add this as an M line open circuit component. The width here is 36.31, and the length is 298.46 mils. All right, now let's just wire this all up.
Now, when I make a comparison to see how well the match works, since I have terminals labeled one and two for the original circuit, and now three and four for the microstrip line circuit, I'm going to make a comparison between S11 and S33, which is the port label of the input port for the microstrip circuit. So let's re-simulate this now. I'm going to double click on the plot window that I had originally, and I'm going to go and add S33 and units of dB and plot it. Okay, just so you can see that uh, sometimes we make mistakes. Um, you can see here that S33 does not match uh, S11 very well, which means I made a mistake. I located where the mistake was made when I did my original calculations. I'm trying to do this matching network at five gigahertz, and I didn't change the frequency of the line calc to match. So we need to resynthesize those transmission lines. This means that our 162.72 degree transmission line should go from 297.46 to 600.56 mils. And our 30.96 degree transmission line should go from 56.79 mils to 114.27 mils. The original synthesis was at 10 gigahertz, uh, and we're doing this at 5 gigahertz. So you can see that these lines more or less doubled in length. And now let's retry this simulation. And voila, you can see now that S33 and S11 match very well. Now, a few notes about uh, this. Our M sub component uh, is a fairly simple one. Uh, this assumes that we have a single layer board. Uh, it, ADS has more advanced substrates that you can use uh, if you'd like to. For instance, this M sub, N sub ST component, uh, you can add multiple layers uh, to, the, uh, to the microstrip component. Of course, there are also different types of transmission lines that we can use. We have our microstrip lines, but if we go down to the different palette, we have various T lines, microstrip, different printed circuit boards, strip lines, and then different multi-layer types of transmission lines that we can use. All right, so there's an example of doing a matching network using more realistic models for transmission lines than these ideal transmission line components that we were using before. And next time we'll look at using these in an amplifier.